here is my only life. A hymn pushed into my tongue like weld screws. The pulsing of a cricket in a crow's mouth. This flat land has held so much weight. I'll collect its fragments. The gospels of vacant parking lots. The quietude of single lane dirt roads. Off to the side, a new family watches their newborn play in a sandbox at the edge of a cornfield where possums go to die alone in the husks while we go on existing. Dying alone is a privilege of privacy. And here, you can possess it without artifice. tall churches or taller skyscrapers. Here, you can exit like waking to the chilled spring where ice sloughs off the evergreens. And the shimmering reminds me of church bells and the acorns unearth themselves amid the dead colored leaves that go on living a buried life. bookstore that holds the yellowed almanacs and historical indexes on pallid steel shelves layered with dust. The loud dreams of farmers whose voices can still be heard, even seen. Clothes billowing like flags strapped to a clothesline. Taut and bouncing over a steep sea of buffalo grass.
depths of a landscape. Here, harsh versions of man's machinery tread through every year. And between each season, space opens up, and the sun unlocks a door in the ground with its brightness. And if you imagine your ears to be a system of roots, let them burrow into soil. sounded like before it was alone. A speck of dirt. The incessant silence of the central Midwest drove my mother mad.
between the gaps of noise. The undulating wind passed like public trains between the rows of terraced houses in crowded cities. seen this world from any different angle. Having lived only at her parents' house in the house next door for 50 years. To not move like that means to measure dust by the buckets of light casting shadows on the wall each day. of our ginkgo in our backyard. The deformed fingers of the sweet gum dropping its daggers around the house like traps. They were the only trees swaying in the pale light of a blank bedroom wall. But it was like a wave threatened to drag her under. And it did. Eventually.
depression A fierce drowning between the slab lots of two houses that have settled forever at the bottom of Springfield, Illinois Sometimes When her eyes stay open but she can't sleep She hung them when she was nine at her parents' house next door.
work and bars. Work and bars. Long days of the factory belt hangover. into a closet too small to contain the dreams that went missing and pull out a routinely painful, uniformed version of himself. Like removing an arm from a bush. Scratched by thistle and covered in cock burrs, he pretends don't hurt. When I look into the landscape behind his eyes,
face. tooth, my father yanked it out with a wet rag. Bloody at its root, he set the tooth on the counter and said, He left me alone after went to visit my mother in the hospital. And I ran outside to plant my tooth among the rotting A and R train tracks behind our house. Dismantled and stacked. White clover blossoms were growing all over the scrap. Burning with the kind of rust that stained my hands orange. I planted my teeth, they would grow into white clover. I shivered as the wind entered through my sleeves. socket as if I had just licked a battery.
was cold. And the white clover blossoms chattered and flinched. winter again and the gutted deer hang from their hoists and gambrels and lose their blood in the snow. sounds like a jaw grinding its teeth in a very quiet room.
like a jaw grinding its teeth in a very quiet room. As I walk away with a knife in my hand to try to sever all that makes me my father and my mother and these states crooked and flat with nothing in them and no one important. Until I decide that's not true. sever anything. I don't want to sever anything. I don't want to sever anything.
The first time I heard my friend say fly over country, I had no clue I should have taken offense. But I was young, and rising five days a week to work at a parking lot with relapsing alcoholics and sex offenders who tried to offer me advice in the form of cocaine knotted tightly in the cellophane of a cigarette box. I wanted to stay there forever because I wanted what was familiar and what was comfortable to remain the same. I was dumb too. Every place was the same then. Whether in Iowa or Indiana, Missouri or Ohio, all their drugs were the same. vacant parking lot and a shaking of hands all their bread lines were the same too smelling of antiseptic with 12 inch TVs holding auxiliary cables in with scotch tape tile gone gray black streaks from the chairs scooting and canned food stacked like tin pillars piled next to cracker boxes inside laundry baskets. And it was at a bread line. Somewhere outside of St. Louis. arch far off in the distance of clouds. That I let a man sell me baking soda in a Ziploc bag because he needed the money for a life out of his control. I wanted a free meal before driving across state lines with a pound of marijuana under my old baby blankets in the back of a station wagon. We got a good deal on the pot. And we wanted to sell it and keep driving. like we had a little too much.
much hope. I made a phone call. And quit my job.
speck of dirt sings from its fallowed field. Abandoned by harvest and covered with frost. Boredom emerges in that cold time. And patience is tried. Watching an icicle melt, drop by drop from a gutter, only to freeze again on an old porch. Black from the fall's unswept leaf rot. Thank you. 
waves across green waves. When the dirt sings, a field of birds scatter in an unrecognizable pattern. Mystery is tilled. As the sky widens out from the ground and vanishes everywhere. Perfect order. 